Hello everyone, welcome to the first episode of PPC Roundtable. Now the whole concept of this is to bring more PPC related stuff in front of you so that you stay on top of everything that is happening in the Amazon PPC world. So let me introduce today the top guest in our list. So we have today Mr. Sandeep. Mr. Sandeep and I founded Regrow Media together. And it is strange because we scaled our agency and we are growing very rapidly. And we are a firm believer that growth is the solution to any problems. So uh, Mr. Sandeep is here. Then we have Afan, our PPC director as well. Uh, we will hear uh, about them as well going forward. And we are planning to continue this episode every week and trying to get into live sessions as well so that you can ask us question. And if you want to get into more detailed PPC, uh, uh, maybe PPC stuff, PPC, uh, uh, something maybe related to more features, more updates. Then we have our own channel, Regro Media's dedicated channel, where you can go and check out. I'll have the link in the description as well. And you can get into more advanced stuff there as well. So without further ado, uh, let's start with our topics today because uh, we all know Black Friday, Cyber Monday sales are there just in front of the corner. So we'll start a little bit about conversion rate optimization and then move on to the advanced stuff on ppc segregation all sorts of thing so uh, mr sandeep i think you you would be the right person to take this question because sales is near right when you talk about pdp product detail page we know how much important conversion rate is because traffic increases a lot during sales right and the quality of traffic decreases during sales that is a negative of it so how do you look at or how sellers should look at the PDP optimization, especially during the sales time? Right. So um, there is there are two elements uh, we have heard, uh, you know, uh, for most of the time we hear that it's traffic and then the conversion. So the traffic is basically the visitors which come onto our listings and the conversion is something that as a seller, as a brand, we can be ready with. It's like a normal offline store uh, where, uh, you know, a store owner keeps the shelf in such a manner that you know whichever is the maximum converting uh, product they showcase them so that when people even passing by they have a reason to come in because there are such products which are actually going to solve problems so here uh, while we talk about our e-commerce our amazon world so here a customer has searched with a search term now with that we know that a uh, you know uh, a relevant traffic is coming to our product page so once a relevant traffic comes to our product page what is that we have to offer because the customer has made up the mind that they are looking for a solution. So that solution either we are going to offer as a brand or our competition can offer. So whoever offering that solution in form of images where it starts with listing images and then they quickly scroll down and move to brand story module and then from there they go to A plus content. So when we talk about creatives. So these are the three important things uh, where most of the times uh, the brands they you know don't invest on the creatives because it is actually the product that is going to sell uh, the you know it's actually the images i'm sorry uh, which is going to sell the product so uh, as a brand owner we have to invest on our images on our creative so much so that when the customer sees and they can easily see through a solution with those images that we have in our product detail pages it can be listing images or it can be brand story or it can be a product uh, a plus content all of them have a you know very clear um, uh, place for a very clear reason to be there uh, listing images are there to you know main image first of all if you talk about is there to you know bring the traffic to the listing and once the main image has brought the traffic to the listing its job is done then we should be focusing on our secondary images and we've got only you know a split seconds it's it's either a second or a two before we can you know uh, grab their attention with one particular image so every image has to be so concise very clear messaging that uh, a customer's you know brain does not have to apply so much uh, time to comprehend the image that what is that image trying to say so whatever product we are selling the messaging with every image has to be very clear you know the the, uh, the mistakes that most of the brands do is they get stuck in uh, trying to provide as in as much information possible through one particular image so uh, that should not be the case rather we should be very specific focus driven with one image that what is the message that we are going to pass on if it is benefits that i'm going to pass on then which are my top three benefits that 
I want to pass on through that one particular image. If it is about the ingredients of the product, then what are the top three ingredients? Okay, top three, top five, whatever ingredients are uh, most important. So every image has to have a purpose and it should not be mixed. We should not, you know, uh, put so much text into it. We should not put a lot of, you know, moving aspects into an image. It should be as if where it is very clear. And once the listing images are uh, doing their job, they sell the product. And if there are any more doubts required, let's say, for example, I like the product now as a customer, but I don't trust the brand, whether they are going to offer me the kind of service that, you know, they can. So for that, the brand story plays a very important role. So the brand story talks about us as a brand that who we are. So for a brand owner, brand story will talk about their rewards, their recognition, their, you know, uh, how long they have been in the business. Are they the manufacturers? How much importance they focus on the quality? All of those things can be in the brand story along with a little bit of, you know, upsell and cross-selling other products. So if I am looking for, let's say, a camera strap, then if I know that the brand also sells camera cover or a camera bag, those kind of things can be shown in the brand story so that I, as a customer, feel about the brand that it is not just, you know, a random cheap uh, camera strap they are selling. Instead, they have multiple products which are complementing. So if I have to buy, let's say, a camera bag, I could check them out. Okay. So if, if I am looking for something else to, you know, look for my product for my camera, I could again, you know, trust them. And then comes the A plus content, where A plus content magnifies what is there in the listing images so that I can uh, pass on a very through big images, normal A plus or a premium A plus, uh, where I can pass on through big images what I have already tried to convey through listing images. Listing images like very focused, but in A plus content, we have room. Okay, we have more room to play. We can do a lot more things in the A plus content where we can talk about us along as compared to others who are selling in the market. Or maybe we can use different kind of a modules. Maybe uh, one can use mobile optimized A plus as well because there are some modules which which appear on mobile differently, much bigger as compared to on a desktop. So there are a lot of things we can do in uh, you know, good terms of uh, uh, conversion rate to improve our conversion rate. Yeah, I think uh, that that are all valid point. Also, what we have seen with few clients is, uh, I, I don't think it will be the right time to talk about it because the time is already passed because the sales is just in the corner, right? So we have also seen the clients who have big brands and they have in-house graphics team. They tend to do one thing which drives a lot more feel good factor for their brand what they do is they change their creatives or a plus based on whatever sale is coming let's assume christmas is coming so they will arrange and make some stuff towards or show some gifts christmas tree inside their a plus or premium a plus and that way their brand value also increases in front of the customer that okay this is a brand who is who is doing something different and we have seen this uh, to go a lot into dot com dot to co dot uk and brands do this a lot so uh, now we'll move to afan afan before we do uh, now uh, before we start this uh, video me and afan was joking around about uh, how jealous we are about mrs sandeep's background and afan i think we yeah. need to level up we need to level up our background game as well so afan uh, yeah, i definitely. think you love data right so i think you have a lot of things to share and add on to what mrs sandeep just shared uh, yeah, so uh, there's one or two things that I would like to say. Uh, in the recent times, the one thing Amazon has good, uh, Amazon has done good, is that uh, before uh, some time it takes around, it used to take around 15 submissions for a brand to unlock the premium A plus content, right? But now it just takes five uh, submissions, five A plus content submissions for a brand uh, to unlock that premium A plus content. It, with that, uh, with, an, with the normal A plus content, we were able to, you know, use five modules, but now we can use even f uh, seven or eight modules, right? So I think uh, it's all about, you know, occupying the space on your product display page. So your your competitors won't just, you know, show up or, you know, they won't just uh, uh, do some sponsored, you know, ASIN targeting on your ASIN. Also, there's another thing, if you're not using a, uh, the comparison charts, I've seen a lot of sellers who does not, uh, you know, uh, use the comparison charts. If you are not using them, Amazon will show the comparison charts itself and it will display your competitors on that comparison chart, right? So out of those five uh, modules, if you are, you know, using a normal A plus content or out of your uh, those seven to eight modules, if you're using a premium A plus content, always, always use the comparison charts and showcase your own products in you know in that comparison charts it is not frowned upon right so if you won't do it yourself amazon will do it and you know it will sh just show your competitors and that will be just you know another uh, red flag for your pdb so yeah 
Yeah, think, just uh, to yeah, yeah, just to add to that, uh, the A plus, um, uh, you know, though Amazon says five modules, but Amazon allows seven modules in normal A plus as well. So they are like very tricky. They just showcase as if only five can be done, but uh, they allow. When you try to submit seven, they show the seven. And uh, uh, to get the premium A plus, you have mentioned click correctly that earlier it was fifteen, and now we just need five submissions. However, we also need to ensure that we have brand story and A plus content already on our all listings. So if we do have that, uh, then let's say for example, if we have only one listing, with one listing also we can get our uh, premium A plus. Where all we have to do is have a brand story, get A plus, then make changes to the same A plus over five times. Once we have done that, after some time, premium A plus uh, will be enabled with just one product as well. So uh, that is a good thing. One thing which is recently done is the comparison chart that you mentioned. Uh, with premium A plus, uh, we can have. Uh, add to cart functionality within yeah. our uh, premium A plus comparison chart. Now that makes it almost mimicking the actual comparison chart that comes just above reviews and after A plus content. So it's like almost mimicking it because we've got add to cart button as well into our premium A plus comparison chart now. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, why not? If we can showcase our other products without paying Amazon for ads, why not do that, right? And again, if our brand is showing more times, obviously it is better because we all know that. If we are shown multiple times, the omnipresent strategy just comes in, right? The customer will know that this is a famous brand and we are seeing it multiple times and a lot of places. So their perspective of per, per, perception also changes for the brand as well. So uh, Afan, I was uh, in, a, in a brand audit with you and uh, you were talking about SKU segregation, PPC, match type segregation, then keyword segregation for with search volume in each campaign. Would you like to uh, go a deep, deep dive into that as well? Okay, so, well, uh, I'm a very big fan of, uh, uh, you know, the data itself. And I used to work with a data-driven approach, right? Uh, I like my data segregated. I like my data, uh, uh, you know, so that I could interlink uh, aspect one with aspect B, uh, with aspect two. And uh, uh, I think I've seen a lot of sellers who are just, uh, you know, advertising multiple SKUs with multiple match types with multiple keywords in a single uh, in a single campaign right so it just makes uh, so much difficult for an advertiser or a manager to look into your account or you know look into that particular campaign right because i won't be able to determine or deduce that which keyword has got you know orders on the top of search or which keyword has target has got uh, orders on the you know product pages and the rest of search right and uh, which keyword has gotten orders for what SKU, right? When you're targeting multiple SKUs and multiple keywords in a single campaign. So I think uh, you have to, uh, you know, uh, have this approach where you work, uh, uh, you know, on your every, every single SKU separately, where you run, uh, so basically I've seen some sellers who are targeting uh, a 10,000 search volume keyword in a same campaign in which they're targeting a 500 or you know 200 300 search volume keyword so that is just useless right that is just baseless that uh, 200 or even 500 search volume keyword would not get any traction all the traction would go to that 10000 or 15000 you know search volume keyword because that has more competition that has more traffic on it right so the thing is that if we segregate uh, i mean if i'm running a ranking campaign right in exact match type and the search volume of that keyword is somewhere around 15 to 20000 and i'm i'm not even running an exact campaign i'm running a phrase or broad campaign right i will do a single keyword ad group right a single keyword campaign i won't use more than two or three keywords in that campaign or not more than you know one sku in that campaign right because that will just uh, make it so much difficult for me to uh, interlink the sales to a particular SQ that I'm targeting, right? So I think this is very important that the sellers need to understand that it's it's not some, you know, toy that you can play with, right? The advertisement. You have to be very careful. It's 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 the most competitive marketplace, you know, in the world right now, Amazon.com or any, any other, you know, Amazon marketplace. So you need to be very careful when you're working with the advertisement because I used to say that, this is something if you if you want to just you know flood away your money just put it in amazon advertisement right it's that easy so i think uh, yeah you have to have that approach where you segregate your keywords with your sqs 
where you are able to segregate your even uh, uh, placements data and you could attribute that placements data to a single target or a single SKU, right? So you could just make informed decisions, right? So yeah, this is what I have to say with the, you know, uh, a segregation of SKUs and the segregation of keywords. Same goes with match types. I have seen sellers, uh, you know, targeting a keyword in exact match type and phrase match type and broad match type in a single campaign, right? So that is just, you know, useless. You're, if you're getting good orders on search terms, you won't be able to, you know, uh, uh, you won't be able to identify that from which match type you're getting that order, right? So yeah, I think it's very important that you use your one one single match type in a single campaign. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, Mr. Sandeep, you had something to add? Yeah. <clears throat> so the thing is, uh, you know, uh, there are two reasons for someone to mix match and then uh, do it. Either one, they are very lazy or two, they are very restricted in terms of budget. It's like a uh, khichdi that we eat in India. E either I'm too lazy to cook, you know, other different uh, dishes or yeah. I don't have money to cook, you know, uh, I don't have money and stuff to cook uh, uh, rice separately and then the dal separately. So these are the only two reasons in the advertising as well. Uh, so don't be lazy. And if you don't have money, then uh, anyways, you are not going to, you know, you're not going to be able to compete with the competition because mm -hmm. there are big brands. And as uh, Afan has mentioned that, you know, uh, if you want to just uh, spend your money, the best place is Amazon advertising. So either have money, be competitive or don't be lazy. Uh, otherwise, you'll be out of the game. Yeah, yeah definitely. I think uh, obviously the more granular we get in terms of data, the better profit margins we have. And that is what uh, I think Afan and Mr. Sandeep is also trying to say. So uh, moving on, obviously sales are there. And when it comes to sales, the traffic increases drastically. And when traffic increases, if you have the same setup of your budget and bids, maybe you'll lag behind with uh, and uh, maybe lose opportunity to showcase your product in front of those extra traffic that is coming. And maybe you go out of budget in the first half or first quarter of the day, right? It may happen. And we have also seen that uh, Amazon rolled out the budget rule per campaign a few months back. And now they have also rolled in the uh, bid rule per campaign, which you can set on our level. You can sp specifically set, okay, from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. I can set this bid should increase. And obviously if, uh, with Amazon, as we know, that they are more into increasing bid and budget and less into decreasing bid and budget so they right now have only the increase option the decrease option is still not there and uh, we have recently launched another video in my youtube channel where i showcased how you can build your dashboard by analyzing campaign report and uh, it will simply give you an idea visualization of which hour is performing good for you and you can simply put more bid and budget in that hour so that you can make sure you are not going behind your budget in that period so when you talk about uh, budget rule as well right so uh, i think mr sandeep you can take this so what do you see general outline or mindset of clients during the sales season is and how uh, aggressive or how much do you have to push clients to increase their budget and bids during the sales season um, it depends on their experience. Uh, those who have had, uh, you know, experience in the past and they know how uh, these deals can either work mm -hmm. in their favor or against. So it's based on their experience. And uh, most of the time, the mature sellers, what we have seen is uh, what they are doing is they are ready to increase the budget, but only during the sale time, the during the deals time. They don't want to do it before that and after that as well because Amazon, uh, you know, is, is like a algorithm, this Amazon NI algorithm, it's like something that you train it on. So if you train it to spend more, it's going to continue spending more. Or if you train it to, you know, restrict the budget at a specific time, then you train it in that manner. So uh, this budget rule that we have, uh, as you mentioned, it is only allowing us to increase. Um, we can do it either, you know, for the full, whole day or for a certain number of days based on the first feature, which is the schedule. And then the other feature, which is based on the performance as well, where we can do it based on certain goals, certain metrics that we have. Uh, the most common metrics that people use is the ACOS or the ROAS, where uh, we can, uh, you know, tell Amazon to increase the budget if I have a certain percentage of ACOS. Let's say, for example, my target ACOS is 30%. And I am, if I, if I have uh, a bunch of campaigns which operate around 25% uh, ACOS, then I can set that kind of a rule where I'm telling that anything which is less than 30, increase the budget by 10%, uh, 20%, you know. And uh, this can come handy during a deal time 
where we know there is going to be traffic and if there is going to be extra traffic with what the certain number of budgets that we usually operate with are unlikely to cover us for rest of the day. So in that case, uh, this can come very handy and can ensure that we are there uh, for the whole day uh, during the sale time. So this budget, uh, I think, is, is can be really helpful for specific, uh, you know, uh, uh, days such as deal time. Yeah, I think you were also talking about uh, the day parting. We have seen that uh, even though there will be some clients who can afford the budget of affording a tool and there will be some clients who can't afford the budget of uh, taking a tool inside. You were talking about how to use bulk operations for day parting. Would you like to share some points on that? All right. So uh, uh, we can do some bit of a uh, uh, day parting using these budget uh, rules that Amazon has come with, even the bid rules. We can play around, uh, but it is very limited right now. It's not like a tool, like other tool paid tools that offer it. And same goes with the bulk operation as well. Uh, we could do that with the bulk operation as well. But then again, um, uh, there is a lot of manual intervention while we do with bulk operation. So uh, wherever there is manual intervention, the chances of you know human errors increases a lot as compared to a tool uh, which we could just set some you know uh, rules and then uh, let it function. Uh, whereas uh, uh, let's say if you cannot afford the, the tool uh, because they are costly, okay, mm -hmm. they are they are uh, very costly uh, for a normal seller for an average seller, it is very difficult to afford such tools. Uh, then in that case. Um, Either you've got the money or you've got the skill, okay? If you don't have either of them, then it's going to be difficult. So let's say if you don't have the money, but you've got the skill or you have developed the skill, then in that case, you can use bulk operations where you can be ready with your bulk in advance for the deal duration. Let's say, for example, if, if I am running right now and I know for the fact that I have a limited budget, it's going to get over, let's say, by 5 p.m., then... Uh, I still have time and based on my campaign report on an hourly basis, I've already figured out that either I'm getting very low data after 5 p.m. because I don't have the budget or I'm getting good data because I see a lot of conversion happening after 5 p.m. So if mm -hmm. either is the case, I think uh, we can keep our bulk ready where I'll increase the bids as well as the budget of the campaigns using bulk operation, using bulk file. But again, it's very tricky. It's difficult to do it. You have to be really on top of it in order to get it done. And it has to be done in advance where you are ready with your strategy and your bulk file. And by 5 p.m. you upload it. Or maybe you can you know, reduce your bits for early in the morning. Uh, you can do that way as well. Uh, but again, you need to have data in order to know when you have to upload one bulk file and when is the other bulk file has to be uploaded because you can't running with the same bulk file once uploaded for 24 hours. You'll have to you know, have a strategy where you can have two bulk file in 24 hours and then see how it is you know, giving the result. Yeah, I think uh, that is why Amazon released a campaign report with the hourly data, right? But still, I think uh, we still uh, the 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 time range is still a lot. I think what we think. So the attribution still, I think the delay is still there. So Afan, do, do you have something to add on it? Uh, well, uh, I think Mr. Sandeep has uh, discussed it quite well. That how do you manage the budget, right? Mm -hmm. I just want to add one thing. That is the budget tab that is available to us on the advertising console, right? I think that is the easiest and most convenient tab that you can use if you want to understand your budgets, right? What does it tell us? Uh, so in the rows, we have individual campaigns, right? And in front of that, there is a column that tells us that in this particular date range, right? Uh, this campaign has been, uh, uh, you know, in the budget, this percentage of the time, right? So if the date range is like uh, 30 days, and it's telling us that this particular campaign has been 50%, uh, you know, of the times it has been in the budget. So it's a red flag for me, right? What I would do, I would, I mean, I just want that 50% to go to the 100%, right? I don't want my campaigns to go out of budget at any point in the day, right? Or any point in that particular date range. So what I would do, there is an option to just increase the bid, increase the budgets. Amazon, you know, provides the suggested budget as well. So we can just increase the budget on uh, you know based on amazon suggestion or you know based on our actual budget you know that uh, you know we can give to that particular campaign so i think uh, if a campaign is performing good and you have to increase the budget only if a campaign is performing good right so if that is performing good then always always increase that budget right try uh, to take that percentage from 50 percent or 60 percent to even 90 95 percent there is no 95 percent try to you know take it to 90 percent or you know maybe more got yeah. it yeah 
Okay, now moving on, uh, we were talking about the VCM defensive and offensive campaigns, right? So when we talk about maybe brand ads or display ads, we have seen maximum seller focuses on either page visit or conversion, right? And um, yeah. I think in the last call, we were also talking about or comparing the kind of placement the VCM campaign gets compared to other campaign types or other placement types, right? So would you like to throw some light on uh, VCM defensive and offensive campaigns, how seller can take advantage of it? Yeah, so uh, yeah, let's talk about the VCPM defensive campaigns first, yeah. because that is the most important part for me, right? Uh, the thing is that on the product display page of your SKU, uh, firstly, I, are... would you like to uh, take the full, like uh, describe the audience of what is VCM campaigns? for them who don't understand. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, just like uh, Facebook advertisement, VCPM basically, uh, it derives from cost per thousand impressions, right? Cost per thousand viewable impressions, right? In Facebook advertisement, in meta advertisement, it is CPM, cost per thousand advertisement, a thousand impressions. In Amazon, it is VCPM, right? Cost per thousand viewable impressions. It's an uh, uh, ad type. It's a feature that a uh, sponsored display provides us, right? So there are three features available to us. Uh, optimize for clicks. We can optimize our campaigns for impressions. Uh, we can optimize our campaigns for conversions, right? So we are talking about optimize for impression campaigns in which we are paying Amazon for every thousand impressions that it is, uh, you know, giving to us. So there are two different kinds of VCPM campaigns, offensive and defensive. We will talk about the defensive campaigns first. If you notice, uh, there are around tons of advertise, uh, sponsored product spots on a uh, you know PDB that uh, you know the customer can just pay money and you know show their product mm -hmm. on, right? But there are only four to five sponsored display spots on a product display page uh, on which you know a, a competitor can you know show their product, right? So we need to be very careful. I mean, we cannot obviously uh, occupy all of the 40 sponsored product spots, but we can try our best to occupy those four to five different, uh, you know, sponsored display spots that we have on our product display page. So if you're running a variation, if you're having a variation of your uh, uh, product uh, that you want to, you know, capture the spots on, then use those variations, give them like, uh, you know, top notch VCPM bits and just try to get you know as much impressions as you can because the point is that we want visibility on those spots right we are not looking for conversions we are not looking for clicks right we're just uh, looking for the impressions the visibility that uh, you know uh, we get on on those spots right so we will pay amazon good amount of money to show our own products on those four spots or five spots that we that are available on you know our product display page right same yeah. goes for the offensive campaigns. So yeah, same goes for the offensive campaigns, right? So the competitors have those four spots as well, right? We will pay Amazon, uh, you know, uh, uh, to show our product, just to show our product. We don't want Amazon to convert it. We don't Amazon, you know, to get us clicks on it. We just want Amazon to show our product, you know, uh, on, on our competitors display pages. And we can just target five to six different SKUs, maybe even 10 SKUs on a on a, on a, on a single, uh, I would say competitors ASIN, right? So we could get all of the visibility, the maximum visibility that, that we can get on our, uh, competitors PDP, right? Because the sponsored display spots on a PDP are just a premium variant of sponsored product spots on PDP that we get, right? So I think it's super important that we do this exercise as well. Yeah. Mr. Sandeep, do you have something to add? Yeah, so defensive campaigns, uh, <clears throat> especially with VCPM, uh, we have to be careful with, uh, you know, using them with a, a limited number. The more we use them, uh, you know, they uh, screw the numbers or they mix match the numbers that we are going to get in terms of uh, analysis that we do usually for a, you know, a monthly basis or, or a whatever duration we do that because... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, VCPM is nothing but let's say for example if a customer decided to uh, make a purchase for a particular product but we were there in the VCPM form somewhere in the product detail page where customer did see our product as well but anyway the customer had to make one so even if it was an organic purchase it will be converted into a advertising purchase mm -hmm. because of that VCPM uh, you know, because the uh, the uh, you know the attribution will be given to that particular ad which showed that VCPM ad so uh, the organic uh, can be taken away by you know cannibalizing can happen uh, so we have to be careful with the uh, usage of it. Another thing is uh, 
this uh, VCPM, uh, you know, it, it also works really good when we do it at a you know um, uh, product targeting level. Uh, we have we have tried that and we see. Of course, it really does wonders. You get the very fantastic numbers when you do that for your internal uh, self devices. But but when we do it, uh, uh, when you do it with the um, competition, there also we have seen them giving uh, uh, real good results. And another thing is. Um, Impression based is now also available for sponsored brand. Earlier it was only for display, as Afan was saying, but uh, recently Amazon has come up with even a sponsored brand impression based, uh, you know, uh, bidding. Uh, the only uh, requirement here is you have to have a brand store. If you don't have a brand store, then you can't do this. So if you have a brand store, which I assume, you know, most of the sellers have, then you can also go for an impression based in sponsored brand. And I think it is, uh, it, it can uh, actually help us achieve the objective of the brand awareness more with the impression based uh, ad types as compared to the you know the cpc based uh, you know cost types that we were getting before got it definitely i think that was 100 percent spot on so uh, yeah i think we had a really good discussion and I, I i'm sure it is going to help the audience a lot and uh, anyone who is watching if you have any questions either to me or fan or mrs Ali, just let us know in the comment section we will try to bring on this in a live format where you can just simply go and ask us question directly and we can uh, discuss on it. We're also trying to uh, audit some brands in front of you, maybe not their live data, but maybe the data that we can get from tools so that you can get some more light into how you can uh, utilize it and make improvement in your brand. So I think uh, that was a fun session today and we will bring on same similar kind of session next week as well. Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day. Thank you.